Hello and welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're excited to have you on. During today's webcast, we will be going over our latest release, 11.2, where we have lots of exciting new features. My name is Agnes and I work on the marketing programs team here at GitLab. I'm joining you from San Jose, California today. We'd love to hear where everyone is tuning in from. So if you feel so inclined, please use the chat function to tell us where you are in the world. Also joining us this morning is James Ramsey from our product team, Antonio Mimo from Field Sales, and our presenter, Simon Williams, our account manager. We're going to give people just a couple more minutes to get locked on. While we're waiting, I'm going to launch a poll you can take part in if you'd like. The graphic on the next slide may be useful as you think through your answer for the first poll question. Great, thanks to everyone who participated in the poll. Before we get started, I'm going to co cover a couple of housekeeping items. First, feel free to ask questions throughout the presentation. You can use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen for that. We'll have dedicated time for questions at the end of the presentation and demo, but you can go ahead and send in your questions as you think of them, and we'll make sure we get to them at the end. If you're experiencing any technical difficulties, you can use the chat function to get in touch with the moderator for help. Now I'm going to turn it over to Simon to talk about the results. Thank you, Agnes, and welcome everyone to our first uh, release radar webcast for uh, the EMEA region. Um, I'm just gonna go through the poll results quickly. So thank you everyone for taking part. It looks like we've got a really good spread of people using different parts of GitLab. Quite a few of you are using the create part, which um, is the traditional sort of version control piece. And we've got a couple of people on the webcast as well who aren't currently using GitLab. So hopefully um, we'll give you some good overview today of what you can achieve with GitLab. Um, but if you do want any more information at all, please feel free to reach out to us um, at the end of the webcast and we'll do our best to help you. Uh, so before James presents the demo to you, I did just want to set the scene for what he will show you and talk a little bit more about what we've done with 11.2. So as you know, or as you may not know if you're new to GitLab, GitLab enables concurrent DevOps by providing a single application for the entire DevOps lifecycle, accelerating your development and delivery. I'm super excited to share with you some of the new features that will help you get started and iterate faster. Now, rapid iteration is key to success in DevOps. It separates the winners from the losers and enterprises that rely on their software innovations get real competitive advantage. Here at GitLab, we aim to practice what we preach. We constantly turn out new code to production and on the last check, we do between 40 and 100 code changes live every day. To do that, we use our own product. It empowers our whole organization, not just the developers, to move quickly and gives us real business agility. Each iteration 
gives us an opportunity to advance and deliver real advantages to our customers. If we're off track, we can learn about it quickly before any significant investment is made that might take us down the wrong path. So let's have a quick look at how 11.2 can help GitLab users do the same. Now, again, another bit of a plug for GitLab. In addition to rapid iteration, we practice consistency. 11.2 is our 86th consecutive monthly release. That's just over seven years. I'd had to do the maths to work it out. Just over seven years of releasing every month. We're very, very proud of it throughout the whole organization. So let's look at three of the release highlights briefly before we move on to um, James's demo. Before I go on, if you do want to look at the full detail of what's in 11.2, you can look at the release notes as well. I'll just pop those into the chat um, so that you can browse through at your leisure as, as I'm discussing them. Um, before, we, before we launch into discussing them in a bit more detail, let's have a quick polling question just to set the context for how we're gonna talk about Web IDE. So Agnes, if you could bring up the next poll for us. Perfect, thank you very much. And for those of you who don't know GitLab's Web IDE, I know there are a couple of you who um, don't use GitLab today. It's uh, something that we introduced in June this year, so it's still relatively new and actually very exciting as a, as a feature to bring out. It really is aimed at helping to get you coding quicker with GitLab, so that you have a full IDE experience in your browser um, and it doesn't rely on having any local clients installed, for example. Here we go, the results are in. Uh, we have out of everyone, it's about 20% of people that are using Web IDE today. Like I said, those of you that are using it today, that's great. Um, but those of you who aren't, please do have a look at it. It's available in all of the tiers of GitLab. Um, so it's there available for you to turn on whichever version you are using today. So let's have a quick look at my screenshot. So the web IDE really makes it faster and easier, like I've said, to contribute changes to your projects. It provides an advanced code editor with commit staging right within your browser. With 11.2, we've made it even easier to see the effect of your code changes and to debug even before you commit. You can now preview your JavaScript web app in the web IDE. You can view your changes in real time, right next to the code, for client-side evaluation. In addition, with 11.2, you can delete and rename files and switch branches without ever needing to leave the web IDE. This means you can see the impact of your changes easily and quickly without needing to change apps and context. Now in today's fast-growing development environment, moving from an idea to setting up a new project from scratch can still be a tedious task. There's a lot of boilerplate code involved and additional admin overhead, preventing your developers from getting started right away. With 11.2, we enable organizations to manage their own project templates. As a GitLab admin, you can now define a group within your installation that serves as a source for custom templates. All the direct child projects of this group are available as templates when creating a new project. All the relevant repository and database information of a template get copied over to your new project, including the project and wiki repository, the issues, project configuration, and more. This lets you get started right away and allows the team to spend more time coding and less time managing the process. Until now, importing complex project structures that have multiple substructures was a very tedious and time-consuming task. With this release, we introduced support for manifest files for project imports. Manifest XML file contains metadata for groups of repositories, allowing you to import larger project structures with multiple repositories in one go. When creating a new project, there is a new option to choose a manifest file as the source of your project import on the import project tab. In addition, you can then select 
from the list of individual projects in a subsequent step if you don't want to import the complete project structure. That's what you can see on the screen here. This improvement allows you to import the Android OS code from the Android open source project as one exciting use case. You can also import other projects that use manifest files which meet our format requirements. And as it always is every month, there are a lot of other features that we've included as well in the release. So I'll just quickly talk through some of them here, some of the highlights. Uh, for me, this is a great one. We're very excited to announce that the cloud native GitLab Helm chart is generally available. This chart features a more cloud native architecture with a container for each component of GitLab and no requirement for shared storage. These changes result in increased resilience, scalability, and performance of GitLab on Kubernetes. The GitLab Runner is also deployed, making it easy to get started with GitLab CI and CD. The GitLab chart is the best way to deploy GitLab on Kubernetes. Please give it a try and let us know what you think. Um, this has been a long time coming, this project, and we would love to get your feedback. In addition, there are several more features which are aimed at efficiency, teamwork, and collaboration. Now, this is, this is quite a cool one. I quite like this one as well. So within your profile settings in GitLab, you can now add a status, including an emoji and a custom message. This status will show up on your profile page as well as in your comments and author title bars. So across GitLab, people will be able to see your status and the emoji, exposing it to everyone that's working with you. The obvious example that springs to mind for me is whenever you're not available, for example, you're on holiday and everyone would know that, that you're not gonna be able to get back to them straight away. Next one um, is pretty cool actually. So instead of restricting search to the project or group that you're in, we can now give you a consistent experience with the ability to search instance wide from the top of every page. This is a really cool one for inner sourcing use cases that you might have where you want to search instance wide. Uh, issue boards, they were originally designed to support workflow tracking with label based lists. In 11.0 earlier this year, we introduced assignee lists so that teams can easily see which members have got issues attached to them and reassign them quickly. Now with 11.2, we've got a third type of list coming, the milestone list. All issues assigned to the given milestone will appear in a milestone list. This allows teams to see the issues in different milestones all at once in one single board with multiple milestone lists. This also means that you can quickly move issues across the different milestones add in the next feature and it gets even cooler. So you have summed weights. With this in 11.2, it means that you can see the total weight of the issues that are in the milestones and for the assignees as well, not just for milestones. So you can make sure you're not overscoping or underscoping. The final one I'm gonna talk about here is that when your at mentioned in an epic, you'll get a to do for it. This just helps to streamline your personal workflow. You can also create a to-do manually from the sidebar, sidebar when you're viewing an Epic itself. Uh, again, similar to the capabilities that we already have within issues and merge requests. It just makes your workflow that much easier to manage. So enough of the bullets, a bit of, uh, bit of overkill potentially there. Let's get on with the demo and I'm very happy to pass it over to James. Thank you, Simon. I'm excited to give you a quick demo. I'll just share my screen. Thank you. Uh, so here we are uh, in a project and I'm, I'm gonna show you a bit about the Web IDE. Um, if you haven't used the Web IDE before, the easiest way to jump in and give it a try is by clicking the Web IDE button. Um, and as Simon said, this is available in every edition of GitLab. Um, so this project, um, to give you a bit of background, is a, a little toy project I've been working on, trying to um, learn a bit of Vue.js, um, and it's a simple to-do app. We can see there's a bunch of uh, files here um, that I've been working on, and um, there are a few improvements that I need to, to make, and I've started on a merge request to make them. So if I open this merge request, 
And we can also open the web IDE right from here. So I haven't added a done button yet. So let's take a look. All right. So this is the web IDE. It's opened one of the files that I changed in my merge request. Um, this probably doesn't mean much. So we can take a look at the new live preview. So clicking the live preview button launches a code sandbox um, side by side in your IDE and we can preview the app live. Um, so this is a to do app so I can add a to do. Um, try out GitLab, uh, switch to GitLab and uh, we can mark some done. I, I suppose I've learnt view. Um, I've got some single component files. So uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty much in love with it. Um, but I'm marking all these items as done, but the button says X, this feels like a delete action. Um, and this is, this is one of the improvements I want to make. So if we take a look at the source code, we can, uh, make, uh, make this say something a little bit more useful. Um, so I think it's in this file. Yes, it is. So here we can see the X button. I'll verify that that's the right button. Ah, there we go. I've made a change and you can see it applied live. And this is, um, I guess the, the dream development scenario, you're making changes and seeing your code live. Um, but I think we can maybe do better than a done button. Um, so what we'll do is we'll add a, add a new component, um, which has an SVG and we'll see what it looks like to have an icon in the button. So in the file tree, we can create a new file in the components folder and we'll call this done button. So just like using uh, your local development environment, we can create files. So I need a new template and I'm just going to copy and paste in an SVG, um, which is from our component library at GitLab, um, which is public if you want to take a look. All right. So this is an SVG for a check mark icon. So still not visible because we haven't yet added this to our view list item. Uh, so to do this, I need to import um, from uh, components slash done view. I think actually the components is not necessary. Um, now we need to include the component. Uh, oh, I've misnamed that. So that's why I've got a compile error. Cannot find the module. Done button dot view components. All right. What have I done here? Done button, done button. Duh. Okay, let's see if we can use this component. Components. Mm -hmm. Done button, template. All right. Sorry, I've probably made a very trivial typo. Done button. Components done. All right, let's, uh, let's commit this and reload it. So to commit the change, we just click the commit button. Um, these are my changes. Um, add done button stage and commit those. Um, let's just reload this. Try the live preview again. Okay. This is better. Um, 
So we still can't see the icon though. And this is what I wanted to show you a live preview. So the great thing about live preview is that if you make a mistake, you can fix it before you ask someone to review it and it's broken. So what I've done here is I've forgotten to add a height argument to my icon. So it wasn't rendering. Um, 12 is a bit small. Let's see what 24 pixels look like. Oh, that's a bit weird. Maybe 14. Yes, I think that's a bit better. So I'll commit that now that I'm happy with that. Okay, fix missing button and we'll stage and commit that or I can commit it by double clicking it. So this is, um, this is how you can use the web IDE to um, add improvements to your applications, even create a, a brand new web app from scratch, um, fix bugs um, or address code review feedback. And that's, that's my favorite use case for the web IDE. When someone leaves feedback on one of my merge requests, I can quickly open it straighten the web IDE and, and fix the typo or fix the bugs that I've created inadvertently. So the next feature I'd like to share with you is about project import and export, um, which I will go to not project import and export. Um, sorry, project templates, um, which I'll explain why I had that documentation page open in a second. Um, so in uh, 11.2, we've added uh, project template support um, and I'll show you the group where we've got some project templates. So the project templates feature allows you to create custom project templates and add them to a repository. So here we've created a simple to-do app, um, project template, a spring template and a minimal Ruby template. And what this allows us to do is when we create a new project, and we create it from a template, we now see the GitLab built-in templates, but also the custom templates. Um, and so the really exciting thing about this is you can add templates that are specific to your organizations and teams um, so that they can get started um, really quickly. Um, an example might be microservices. Um, if you're using microservices, you could have a template and every time just get it right um, very quickly in a single click. So the, the, there are quite a lot of things that get created with um, a project from a project template, the, the wiki contents, the project contents, any uploads, uh, web hooks, issues, um, the things to draw attention to that aren't copied across are CI variables, uh, container registry images and build artifacts. Um, but if we create a new one from the spring template, We'll use this template. Um, I'll create a new one. This is my uh, called spring test. Great new app. I'll make it public. Oh. Oops, I've already created a test. All right. Oh dear. I think I it cleared my settings when I had the typo. So let's uh, use this template, create a new one, spring app, create template. Here we go. So this is importing the project and it's um, copying over all that data I described before um, into our new repository. And here we go. I've got all my files that were in the template. Um, it's going to have copied across all the settings. So you'll see that um, any permissions around uh, project capabilities. So um, LFS was disabled in that template. Um, the pipelines were enabled. Um, any issue settings or merge request settings, these are all copied across. So if you've got a specific way of doing things in your organization, you can use project templates um, to quickly uh, replicate those when you're creating new, new projects. So it's a really exciting feature um, for uh, organizations using GitLab. The next really exciting feature I'd like to share with you is around um, importing Android manifest files. So the, the Android project uh, is actually open source project consists of multiple repositories. Um, so I can jump back here. So all of these are different repositories that need to be created and in um, a specific structure to work together. Um, and it's 
a bit of a pain to create this many projects. And so what the Android project has is a manifest file and you can now use a manifest file in GitLab to quickly import a subset or all of these repositories into your GitLab instance. So I'll show you how to do that by creating a new project. And I'm going to import a project and oh, I cannot see the option. Oh, I am sorry. Um, I can't demo this to you right now <laughs> because the button's not available. Um, so I may have done something wrong here. Um, or the staging environment might be running a different version than I'm expecting. Um, I apologize for that. Um, but basically, uh, you would click on, there's a new manifest file button um, that allows you to upload a manifest file and it will give you a list of every single repository here. So each one of these is a repository and you can then select individually which ones you want to import or click an import all button. Um, so finally, I'd like to show you the milestone board. So this is, this is gitlab.com here and this, these are the issue milestones for the gitlab.org group. So you'll see um, these are milestones for some previous releases. Um, we also have milestones for all our upcoming releases. Um, sorry, scroll past them too quickly. Um, down here, we've got 11.5, which is coming up soon in October, November. Um, and we use these in the issue boards. And so this is the new milestone list. So this is uh, the milestone board for my team. Um, you can see these are the direction items that we're working on for 11.4. Um, we can see how many issues and what weight they are. And looking out into the distance, we can add issue columns for upcoming releases, um, upcoming milestones, um, 11.5, next three to four releases. Uh, we can add a, add a new list. So I'll add another milestone because uh, 11.6 is coming up very soon. Oh, and I've already added a milestone, um, already added an issue to that. I probably need to add some more um, great features to 11.6. Um, but yeah, this is how you can use and how we use the new milestones lists in the issue boards. So Simon, I'll hand back to you to um, wrap things up and take questions. Perfect, thank you, James. Um, that's, I mean, I, I personally just love the web idea. I think it's such an exciting um, capability to have within the product. Um, I'd love to see what's, what's going to evolve from where we are today. Um, but it's not time to talk too much about us and what we're doing. It's time for you to ask us questions. So I'm throwing it open to the floor um, now for Q&A. Anyone that has questions, please just let us know. Um, there should be functionality for you to just chat it to us. Um, I'm going to just add, oh, I've already done it, the release blog post about 11.2 if you want to see more details. Um, but in terms of questions, I'm just going to bring it up and see if there are any there at the moment. Agnes, have you had any come through yet? Yeah, uh, we don't have any come through yet, but maybe we can start with some questions that, you know, we have seen come up a lot. So, uh, one, uh, when are we going to do the server side evaluation? Seems like James uh, did a sneak peek right there uh, in the demo earlier. So James, maybe you want to pick this one? Sure. Um, we're, we're actively working on server side evaluation at the moment. Um, and we're, we're very excited about it. The first iteration um, is coming in 11.4. Um, and it is a web terminal powered by server side evaluation. So the really exciting thing about that will be that side by side with your code, you'll be able to run unit tests and uh, pull up a, a REPL interface to your uh, preferred language um, and will support any language that you can run in uh, uh, GitLab CI. So server side evaluation will be powered by GitLab CI. Um, and the actual live preview of web applications uh, will come in, uh, I think 11.5 or 11.6 but we're working on that at the moment and that will be an ultimate feature. Thank you, James. Um, all right, maybe another one um, that a lot of people are curious, uh, what is Helm? 
So maybe Simon or um, James, you want to take that? James uh, would probably give a better answer than me, but Helm is a way to uh, get started with installing Kubernetes, with Kubernetes. Um, and the important thing about it for us is that we've now got all of the GitLab application can be installed using a Helm chart. Um, it was previously in beta. I think it was in beta for quite a while, maybe six months or more, but it's now generally available. So you can take that Helm chart that's available and install all of your GitLab application um, so that it's cloud native and get all of the benefits from, um, from using a cloud native architecture in terms of scalability, resilience and performance. Um, right for all of your GitLab users. Awesome. Thanks, Simon. I guess if there are no questions, we will close up with one um, that, you know, again, come up, comes up a lot. So what format is required for the manifest files? Uh, the, the manifest file format is a, an XML file format. Um, and it's documented in the GitLab documentation. I can paste a link quickly. Um, in the chat, um, and so it's it's the same format that um, Google uses for the Android project, and uh, there's there's more detailed documentation available on the Google uh, page, uh, Google uh, website as well. So here's the link uh, to take a look at the manifest file. All right, um, thank you, James. And here is us actually commented. It says. It still has post Postgres that may not scale like other cloud native DBs. So, I think it's a comment. Um, thank you, Isa. And Marco sent over uh, a link to all the panelists on Helm. So, thank you, Marco. All right, if we don't have any other questions, um, maybe let's kind of move on and close up uh, with like a little bit of tease on what's coming up with 11.3. Uh, go ahead, Simon. Yeah, so 11.3 is right around the corner. It's 10 days away um, because we release on the 22nd of every month. It's, it's always the case that something shiny and new will be available very shortly with GitLab. Uh, 11.3 is no exception, so I will just post into the chat. There we go. Um, the link to all of the releases, and you can see exactly what's in 11.3 there. But 11.3, some of the highlights that I've picked out, um, protected environments, I think is really an interesting one and is really good for the, the GitLab admin teams to look at in terms of just controlling who gets to um, deploy changes, for example, to production or to staging if you want to protect um, your environments that GitLab's deploying to. Um, there's a bunch of improvements from our planning team, including some improvements to epics and roadmaps. Uh, for SAST, we're including Groovy to the languages that we support. And there are a host of other features um, that I won't go into now, but please do check out link in the chat so that you can see more details on them. As always, it includes links to the specific issues themselves. So you can comment and give your feedback directly in those issues straight to the product teams. And on that note, that's it. That's my time. Um, I'm going to hand over back to Agnes just to say from me, uh, thank you very much for your time today, everyone. Thanks, Simon. Um, all right. So uh, just a few last housekeeping items. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts on today's webinar. So please fill out our webinar survey, which I'll drop in the chat today. Um, here you go. And then finally, if you have any other questions, um, please don't hesitate to reach us uh, via our sales contact page about.getlab.com slash sales. Uh, that's all for today. Um, thank you so much for joining us.